Well, have you ever seen a ranting and raving comment on the internet? I'm sure I have in my days working here on my YouTube page. Well, and I'm sure you have as well. But did you ever think that the ranter might be getting paid? A new book called Murdoch's World alleges that Fox News had its public relations staffers write comments on the internet that defended the news channel against any blogs that had something negative to say. According to David Falcon Flick, the book's author, the former Fox staffers would use anywhere from 20 to 100 fake accounts to defend the channel's honor. And the internet savvy among you might note that having different account names isn't enough to keep the comments from getting traced back to Fox News, but the Fox PR de department already knew that. And so workers used anything from dial-up connection to old laptops to avoid detection. So should we expect news organizations to hire digital armies? Or is this one step too far? To talk about this and other cable news stories of the day, I'm joined now by Georgetown journalism professor Christopher Chambers. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. So first of all, let's start off by talking about Fox News. Is this idea of paying bloggers to write popular comments and, and really praise you unethical, or is it just good PR? Um, it's unethical and it's good PR. <laughs> so it's <tough. laughs> yeah, I mean, it's as simple as that, but it fits their business model. Um, this is something that they did a while back. So it's kind of old school because, you know, we're not really talking about comments on blogs as much as this is so 2011. But, I mean, the concept of, of doing this is something that is extended now into uh, popular practice, maybe not through the news organizations, but through related organizations. So you might have five Fox doing it three, four, five, six, eight years ago. Now you have think tanks or other blogs in conjunction with people that might be sympathetic to Fox's message relaying these kinds of things. The Tea Party Patriots, for example, with the uh, anti-Obamacare toolkits and the Heritage Foundation actually creating these things as well. And you have um, liberal um, counterparts to that. Some of the big unions have created similar toolkits and, and through their PR organizations have basically populated you know the comment sections mostly through social media we're talking about social media now rather than blogs because I said that's that's so 2011 the blogs but now it's through social media and so this it, this was the seed for this kind of behavior however the genesis was uh, Rupert Murdoch or more accurately Roger Ailes uh, uh, crew doing this at one time so I mean it, it's 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 was groundbreaking and sneaky back then now it's sneaky but uh, you know garden variety now now. At the same time, though, you know, people don't go on specifically to read the comments. So is it really all that bad? I mean, just to play devil's advocate here. Well, even, even back then, it is important because a lot of the action goes on in the comments. And you can gauge... You, you know, popularity and, 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 and comments also pull in more hits, more eyeballs on the site. Uh, you know, so you, you leap forward uh, uh, five years, five, six years to social media, where you're not talking about comments, you're talking about, uh, t you know, tweets, you're talking about retweets, you're talking about favorite, favorites, you're talking about likes on Facebook and advertising content on Facebook and, you know, just trying to get likes and eyeballs on these certain items. So, you know, it, it's very important and it's, and it's very important to tracking uh, how many people are looking at what you're trying to, the message you're trying to put out and for countering the pushback. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a double, uh, double good whammy for them. So perhaps Fox News and other news stations might be better served focusing on reporting well, news. news rather yeah. than commentating on their yes, own news. Yes, exactly. How about that? But it's not. But that, that's not the business model, and that's not what, what brings the eyeballs to the convergence of the site and the TV network at the same time. That that, that the site, the social media, and the TV network all working in conjunction, converging. You need you need an extra edge. And as a business, after all, so any edge you can get. Mm -hmm. Now speaking of Fox News, I want to play a clip of MSNBC's Chris. Matthews, who is speaking to Larry King about some of the Fox News hosts. I'm watching Fox. Will, uh, what's it, Megyn Kelly be able to stay in the middle? Or will she will move she? over? Will she move over? Will she have to move over them? I look at Greta. Greta was more in the center left. Now she's moved over. There's a lot of group pressure in those places, in any place you is work. Is there is, um, is uh, Oh, I feel it. I think it's there. I mean, I think you know your audience. You know who you're talking to. I always know who I'm talking to. 
So why do you think it is that networks, as Chris Matthews alleges, are pushing their hosts to be more partisan instead of unbiased? Well, I mean, it, it's this is actually pretty old school. It's demographics 101, basically. If you look at MSNBC, where he is, and their average viewer, um, they're going to be more partisan on the left, especially with regard to the controversies like you know elections or the government shutdown, to, to pull in that, that core audience and then to bring in the, uh, people on the fringes, and not, not on the ideological fringes, but on the fringe audiences who might be just using social media or other platforms to get their news, to pull them in. Likewise with Fox, you have to look at, at, at the comment he made about Megyn Kelly. The average Fox viewer is a white male who's in his early 60s. So, I mean, so you could do all the stereotype <laughs> games you want with that, but I mean, but there's a reality there that she will have to move over in a certain, uh, if you're talking about the evening uh, lineup, to meet the, the, the ideological kind of raw meat demands of that audience. And, and it is a different uh, playground, if you will, than the daytime, which, which is the real news that sets up for the evening entertainment, basically. And, and, and that's what this, we're talking about, is evening entertainment with a po political soap opera. And so what we're seeing is a, not only a shift in some of those commentators, the Rachel Maddows and things like that, exactly. but also in some of the people that we expect and that we want to be unbiased in their reporting. But I want to switch topics with you one more time. All three major mainstream networks experienced major boosts during the boosts during the government shutdown. Right. I want to take a look at the numbers. MSNBC's primetime viewership went up 35%. Fox News experienced a primetime viewership increase by 9%, and CNN went up by about 11% in its primetime viewership. So does this signal that the U.S. population loves drama, or is it perhaps a good thing that Americans are interested in what's going on with real politics versus real housewives? Well, I mean, it, it's a double-edged sword. Yes, it's good that people are coming to, you know, and, and TV news, you know, forget the, the, the hype, you know, above a certain age group. If you're talking about young people, the people are still getting their news from other sources, other platforms, social media. But these core audiences, people say over 35, that they want to bring in. They are doing it. The problem is what are they getting when people come? And it's and it's partisan flavored uh, content. It's it's infotainment. It's political soap opera. So it's real housewives except with, you know, uh, House Republicans or or Jay Carney. And 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 this this is not real analysis. And you, especially if you're talking about the evening content on MSNBC and on Fox. Perhaps the real housewives of Michelle Bachman, although probably with <laughs> right. a lot fewer slaps right. and drinks thrown in the face. <laughs> no, Chris Chambers, Georgetown you. journalism professor, thank you so much for joining us. Sure.